Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Amber. I just realized that one of my press-ons <laughs> popped off. Nine on. <laughs> so embarrassed. Okay, but I'm not because y'all can get the real me. If you know me in real life, you know press-ons are one of my favorite things. So I wear press-on nails. These are press-ons. Get into them, baby. Yes. And so, but the one of the issues about wearing press-ons is that your nails just randomly pop off. So I am missing a nail. It's like a it's like a running joke with my friends. Like they'll I always keep nail glue in my purse and <laughs> They'll look on the ground and see one of my nails and they'll be laughing at me. So that's funny as hell. I'm missing a nail, but neither, I'm here, that's neither here nor there. Welcome back to my channel. It's Amber. Watch Amber, the confidence queen. And I'm here today with an episode of STD Anonymous. I want to know, I want to know your name, your name, your name. Why you gotta be anonymous? Did y'all mess with Bobby V like I used to mess with Bobby V? Bobby V was my baby's daddy until I saw him on Love and Hip Hop and until I realized he was under five foot tall. I'm 5'8", it just would not work. So I, I've already recorded one of these that's gonna be edited, but um, okay, the camera keeps moving. I'm sorry, guys. It's gonna be edited, but, and look at my cell phone, y'all. <laughs> I am embarrassed, like I'm, in, I'm showing out today. I ought to be ashamed of myself. So STD Anonymous, what STD Anonymous is, it is a series I've started here on Watch Amber where I read an email that was sent to us by one of our cousins, our Herpes Can Never cousins, which basically who are they? Our Herpes Can Never cousins are, is our community that I am the co-founder of Herpes Can Never. Um, and so we have a community on Facebook and we have an anonymous email where you could submit your stories, you can ask your questions, and I am going to read one of the stories and give my feedback. So sometimes they'll ask questions, sometimes it'll just be a story and I'll just share my reflection notes, but this will be a good chance for you all to hear other people who are living with herpes and their situations to hopefully help you even more realize how not alone you are and how common herpes is and how common even some of the brokenness that we share is and so that we can relate together. So get in the description box for the link to everything. If you wanna send us your STD anonymous story, if you'd like to join us on Facebook, if you want to be a cousin and be a part of the Herpes Can Never community, you can do that with the description box. Or if you want to book me for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, you can do that in the comments or the description box below. So I'm reading, and of course, like I said, it's all anonymous. So the question says, or the email goes like this. Hey, I was recently diagnosed three months ago. I reached out to the guy that took advantage of me in my early 20s, and he's in his late 30s, he told me I was lying, called me a ch and blocked me. It was very hard news to take in at first, but it helped me to love myself more. You always, excuse me, you always have to love yourself first. I went into a deep depression, but my family brought me out of it by encouraging me and always treating me the same. I'm still learning my body and what triggers me, but every day it gets better. And in my affirmations in the morning, I always say a stigma will not define me. I'm still a queen and love no matter what. My standards also do not change because of this. I'm still beautiful and pushing forward. Thank, thankful for you ladies. Thank you guys so much. Herpes could never, period. <laughs> okay, anonymous, yes, queen. Wow, so there isn't a really a question. This one's more so just like a positive one, right? She's saying that she was taken advantage of and she was recently diagnosed as of three months ago. And just to hear the, the reaction from the person who actually gave her herpes and to just hear their reaction towards her and just hear how she's kind of overcome that reaction is super inspiring because, you know, one thing that I'm sure a lot of you all can relate to, or not even a lot, maybe some, do you know the person who gave you herpes? Um, was your reaction or his reaction or her reaction the similar to what, you know, our, our cousin shared with us, she basically stated that he called her a B. He said she was lying and he ghosted her and blocked her. And unfortunately, she's not the first person who shared with us that that's happened when you get diagnosed with herpes and now you wanna go tell the person who you believe gave, gave it to you so they can be aware, so they can go get tested, so they can start living more responsibly. Um, when you tell them if they're in denial, if they're not ready to re receive such information, they will literally call you a bold-faced liar and all types of other names and make you seem like you're the one who ruined their life when in all actuality, um, 
No, that it was ruined before you even got near it. So I want to share that. If that's happened to you, first of all, you're not alone because we just heard a story from someone who was in that exact same situation and just the positivity she was able to get out of it is super encouraging. So if someone that the person you believe gave you herpes reacts like this, what I recommend is, is to take it, take a page out of sis's book right here. Take a page out of her book. Get around people who are going to support you, uplift you, affirm you, and it starts with you. She said she gets up and she says her daily morning affirmations. So she calls herself a queen. When I was healing through my affirmation, when I was healing through my herpes diagnosis, if you watch my How Herpes Saved My Life YouTube video, while I was healing from my own brokenness and the stigma of the stigma and how it affected my life, one thing I did every single day, well, most days, was say affirmations to myself. And one that just comes to the top of my head is I am blessed with an incredible family and wonderful friends. And I, that's my reality today. I have a wonderful family who's so supportive. I'm in my sister's house right now shooting this YouTube video. Um, I have a, a great friend circle, a friendship network. And I, I partly believe that is to be why that is today is because of what I told myself, what I affirmed to myself, what I said to myself out loud. And so I want to encourage you, start saying affirmations to yourself because you're, the love, the acceptance, the forgiveness all starts with you. But also the importance of surrounding yourself with people who also want to encourage you and keep your mindset positive and keep your outlook positive. It might not be your family. It might be your friend group. It might be your coworkers. It might be friends that you've made family, whoever the case may be. It might be your herpes can never cousins on Facebook. Um, but get around and find a group of people who are going to support you. Because say she didn't have those people that was able to support her and she got treated like that by, by the person who gave her herpes, she could be tempted if she was all alone or she didn't have support, she might be tempted to stay with him because at least he accepts her or at least he knows she has it or she might be tempted to just feel like no one will ever want her, accept her, or love her because she didn't have anybody to affirm her and tell her otherwise, which is absolutely untrue because herpes can never, period. But the importance of surrounding yourself with people who do love you and want to see you win. A lot of people say, Amber, I'm scared to tell my mom I have herpes. I'm scared to tell my siblings. I'm scared to tell my cousins. I'm scared to tell my aunts and uncles. Whoever is close to you in your life that you would want to tell, there's people are apprehensive about sharing. And I'm like, if they, if you think this person loves you and wants the best for you, it's a, almost a safe bet to say that they're going to feel that exact same way about you even after your herpes. And they might feel a different connection with you now that you shared something so vulnerable and potentially painful. Um, with them because now y'all have even more to, you know, talk about and relate on and things like that. So the support system is clutch. Um, the fact that she knows that it's his loss and that, that he's going to have to do the work he has to do on him is another plus because on Clubhouse this morning, we were talking and one of the girls shared how all these yawns and burps and everything's just coming out while I'm talking. And I'm just like, man, when you get in your mid to late thirties, cause I just hit 36 bodily functions just start happening and you can't control them. And I'm embarrassed kind of, <laughs> but anyway, you can blame the person for being a POS for not giving you the opportunity to um, decide what you want to do with them. You can do all that all day long. You can stay wrapped up mentally in the person who gave it to you and how they responded and how they had this, you know, negative response, or you can just sever ties mentally, pick up, you know, the pieces and emotionally decide to move forward. That is a tough decision. That decision is not even, that might not even be you know, natural, your, your first instinct might be to go nuts, lose your mind, cuss him out, go to jail, go to his job. Like your first in, your first instinct might not be the one you want to act on in this instance, because when you give someone else that much power in your story and your narrative and your actions, when another person's actions can cause you to altogether change the way you act, you got to reassess because it's not them. It's you. 
And I had to accept the fact that I could call the person who gave me herpes every name in the book, a lion, no good, raggedy Instagram, fake, phony, capping, filling all the blanks because now I just have cuss words. I could call him all of those things. But at the end of the day, I had to accept the fact that I dealt with him, I, I slept with him, I entertained him, I got wrapped up into him. I had to accept my responsibility because when I accepted my responsibility, I also took my power back in the situation. And now it was no longer I got ghosted or this person gave me herpes. It was I put myself in a situation with someone, I was irresponsible with myself sexually, and as a result, I test positive for herpes now. You see the difference? Are you speaking from a victim or a victor perspective? Where is your narrative coming from? And sis right here on our STD Anonymous, she had every right to, to claim that victim role real tough. She was taken advantage of by someone who was over a decade older than her. And then when she told him about his herpes, he cussed her out, blocked her and said she was lying. She is saying that narrative for the rest of her life and I'm sure somebody would feel sorry for her. But no, you know what she said? That's fine. I'm gonna go around the, get around people who love me, who appreciate me, who support me for her having to be her family. And I'm going to look myself in the mirror every day and tell myself I'm a queen. And look where she's doing just three months later and she's a part of our Herpes Can Never community. The power and your mindset, the power in your words, the power in having people around you that love you and want to see you win. I'm telling you, it is limitless. It will change your life. It will change your narrative. You got to be willing to grow and detach from the victim mentality that you've been holding on to with your herpes diagnosis. You want to break the stigma of herpes in your life? Be willing to let go of the fact that you've been playing the role of a victim. Bars. Hashtag bars. Bringing awareness, raising standards. Drop that in the comments. So what I want to leave you guys with on the way out of here is tell me what you think. Give me your input. Give me your input on the story. Can you relate? Have you told the person who gave you herpes, they gave you herpes, and <laughs> their response was, you a bee and you lying? How, what, what was their reaction? And how do you view it now? How has your mentality, your perspective changed from a victim to a victor? I'd be so interested to know. But that was our STD Anonymous. That was a great one. More so like a story than a question. But we can all learn lessons because your story has the power to save a life. So I look forward to reading your STD Anonymous right here on Watch Amber. If you can share it with me in the description box is all the information you need to get in contact with me. And I really appreciate y'all listening. We're breaking the stigma together because we're showing up. We're doing the work. And remember that herpes could never, period. Peace.